Hey everyone, Lee Pacquiao here and you are watching The Business of Law. Special guest today, we have John Lindsay, founding partner at the New York office of Major Lindsay in Africa. It of course, is the leading legal recruiting firm in the world. We're thrilled to have you join us. Delighted to be here, thanks. Is now a good time to go to law school? It depends what you want to do. Um, I think if you can be reasonably assured you're going to a top law school um, and you're willing to work very hard, um, I think it's fine. I think if you end up at a um, a lesser law school and have $150,000 worth of debt and then half of the people who graduate from those schools can't get jobs, I think it's, it's a very tough road to hoe. So it sounds like we're talking about a fantastic deal for a very small amount of people. That said, if you can get into that exclusive club, it sounds like it's a great time to be a lawyer. I'm told it's the hottest market for lateral partners and senior associates that there, there ever was. Is that true? It's, there is a hot market for lateral partners who have business. The, the old expression, follow the money, mm -hmm. uh, still applies to law firms. And um, you know, there are occasional situations where a firm needs to fill a, a hole in their lineup. They need a left-handed uh, short reliever for the late innings. They'll hire someone without business. And if people are coming out of government, firms will make investment hires because they know those people have talent and experience that can be valuable to their clients. But um, I'm not sure it's a whole lot busier than it's been. I think there's more attention paid to it. Every single partner who moves now has a press release. Uh, there's a story somewhere in the legal press about it. So I think it feels like there's more and more, but I'm not sure that it's, uh, the numbers are not hugely higher. For senior associates, it very much depends on the practice area. There were a number of areas that during the recession, firms cut their associate ranks substantially and didn't hire. So real estate, finance, M&A, um, all of those now are associate recruiters are very, very busy trying to find people who don't exist, basically. You, we can't make them out of straw, so you know, we, we do the best we can. But there's a, definitely a shortage on the supply side. And firms are retooling people to a certain extent. Yeah, I mean, on the other side of the equation, what practice areas are not hot right now? I think um, practices that can be viewed as commodity practices, um, uh, labor and employment right now is, is a little bit slower. Um, uh, you know, I think where firms don't see high margins and don't see high realization rates and high billing rates, um, there's, there's less interest. But having said that, it, it is also true that there are firms that say, you know what, the big firms aren't doing as much labor and employment. We're going to do more of it. Mm -hmm. They're, we're not doing immigration. We're going to do more of it. Whatever the area is, there's always someone who's willing to take that on, and they can do it if they can do it efficiently um, and give the clients good value. They're going to make money doing it. Where geographically speaking, um, do you see things heating up? Where are firms trying to be in terms of the next money center in the world? Yeah, London is becoming more active for disputes practices. London's still obviously a very big uh, arena for both uh, the international arbitration and just commercial disputes generally. Um, in Asia, we're seeing a lot of demand for uh, FCPA and internal investigations. Uh, there are a lot of Chinese companies that are listed on U.S. stock exchanges that are beginning to realize that it's, it, it can be expensive and, and somewhat dangerous to, to ignore the rules of uh, the American regulators. And, um, U.S. firms are finding that's a, that's a pretty profitable business. It's a uh, premium work, um, whereas the corporate work in Asia is, is a little bit tougher now. It's so price competitive among the U.S. firms and the U.K. firms. How many deals do you expect to do this year? In terms of partners who are mm -hmm. changing firms? Um, I hope it's thousands, but uh, I, I think realistically, I, I don't actually keep a count, but we have 190 recruiters and about uh, slightly more than a third of them do partner recruiting. Um, so it would be some in the hundreds, it's not, not in the thousands. And the firm's growing? Our firm is um, gradually growing. We have um, 22 offices around the world. We have, um, we've added in, in the last few years um, some areas that our clients have been pushing us to get into for years. We do project lawyers now, which we'd never done before. Uh, our, our law firms are trying to be more efficient. They want to be able to give their clients good value. So we've um, 
grown that business very substantially. And we also have a law firm management division, which finds executives, uh, C-level executives and others for law firms, which is very much the trend these days. I think, you know, when you have a billion dollar business to say, we'll just take, you know, our bankruptcy lawyer and make him into our chief strategy officer. It's like, well, he might be able to do it, but wouldn't it be great to get someone who's, who worked at Arthur Anderson and then was at Price Waterhouse and, you know, has been at Bain for five years and actually can, can do, a, uh, do this and be a professional at it. Yeah. No, I, this is a fascinating interview for me to do um, from my perspective uh, because I get this sense from a lot of people who run large law firms that you're not exactly um, beloved. Uh, by people who work in the industry. And I don't understand why. I mean, I did an interview with a, a partner at Dewey & LaBeouf uh, who recently left, and uh, he all but blamed the demise of the firm on recruiters and headhunters calling partners at their desks and trying to jump off of a sinking ship. Well, I, Where does I, this come from? It's an interesting analogy, because you know, for all the people who blame uh, the recruiters, uh, you know, I, I, I think I could call partners at Cravath all day long, and I'm not sure that I'd get a whole lot of people who would be willing to jump ship. People don't leave a firm because a recruiter calls them. They leave a firm because they are concerned about their firm. There's something that's missing at their firm. They're not being treated fairly. Um, and I think the people who blame uh, the recruiters for the demise of their firm uh, should look to the firm's management and the decisions they made. Um, my analogy is that we're, we're you know, we're not, uh, we're not vultures, we're the Coast Guard. You know, they, they ran their ship up on the rocks and mm -hmm. we're picking the survivors out of the water for a firm like Dewey. Um, that, by the time it, you know, the, by the time the recruiters were calling in force, it had already been at least a year, but, you know, the, or more, that the firm had been in desperate, desperate trouble. You know, we were seeing partners leaving the firm who said they hadn't been paid that they had been promised X and Y and they hadn't gotten uh, those payments. Um, you, you, can't, you can't keep a firm alive when you do that. And you know, to blame the recruiters is really shooting the messenger. So switching gears entirely, uh, I also wanted to pick your brain about diversity in big law in 2015. Is 2015 the year where people get their acts together and start to turn around these problematic statistics that are jumping out at us, less than 3% of big law partnership ranks are made up by African Americans. Um, how, how in this day and age can they be handling a stat like that? I, I'd love to think that 2015 could be that year, but I think it's um, pretty optimistic. Why is I, that? I think, I think you know, the, the, the fundamental problem is that, that law firms, I, I think they're sincerely committed to the notion of diversity, they really want diversity. They, w they would love it. And their clients are pressing them to do it, so it would be in their business interest to do it. The problem is that at, at the, the beginning of the funnel, they're, they're picking their associates based on criteria that they had when I got out of law school 40 years ago at Columbia, um, which is how good are you at writing essays about appellate opinions, fundamentally? What are your grades? Um, now, that worked out very well for me. I was a three-time Stone Scholar, but, mm -hmm. um, but that doesn't really help diversify your partnership. If, if they could look at other criteria, um, resilience, grit, uh, determination, uh, in, uh, emotional intelligence, which is something that is very important for lawyers but isn't really measured at all by law schools, um, they would have a much more interesting, much more diverse, and arguably much much stronger partnership but firms don't do that and they're all afraid I think you know if they don't take the very top the people the top grades from the top top schools and maybe they'll take the number one person from the University of Oklahoma Law School but but they're not going to take the number five and they're, and they're not going to take someone from the bottom of the class at NYU um, I, I think if you do that you know then you have a very limited pool of diverse associates those people don't have role models. They don't have mentors. They don't have people to help guide them through the, through the, uh, through the ranks. And then, of course, your clients will try to steal your best diverse associates and ask you why you don't have more. Well, you took my associates. <laughs> right. um, but it, it, it's a terrible problem. And, and you know, our firm, I think partly because people have always assumed that because Africa is in our name that we are, we are somehow uh, uh, more diverse than, than perhaps we are, um, 
is something that's been a fundamental part of our firm. Uh, we, we, had, we were lucky enough to have Paul Williams join us as uh, a partner. Um, he was a general counsel of a Fortune 15 company, and he had been, just been named one of the top African-American lawyers in the country. And he joined us because he wanted uh, to be somewhere where he could have an impact on diversity in the legal profession. Mm. He's been doing in-house searches for the most part, and we do every slate that we, we do for our clients is a diverse slate. But it's, it's a very, very difficult problem. And I, I don't see this being the year in any, I wish it were, but I, it's very tough to make progress. We're coming off of an interesting year when we look at the pipeline for talent coming into the legal profession. Um, bar exam failures spiked this past July. Enrollment in law school is down across the board. Uh, when you talk to law firm leaders, are they concerned about the quality of the pipeline of talent coming into the profession? I, I don't, I haven't heard that. Um, I think, you know, Columbia and Stanford will fill up their class every year with, with bright, energetic, uh, people, um, and every year Columbia will have a top half of the class and the bottom half of the class. So the, the, the best firms will still be pulling from the same pool. Um, I think the fact that fewer people are applying to law school is probably a, a healthy thing. I think they're, the, the, all the reports I've seen said there's an oversupply of lawyers. The fact that only 55% of the, the, the graduates recently have gotten jobs that require a JD is a very telling statistic. Uh, the, and, and so if a few law schools at the bottom of the food chain fade away, I think that would probably be a good thing. Um, that's that may be uh, the snob in me. But I, I think if those people can't get jobs and all they're doing is running up a bunch of debt, um, it's, it's not healthy. John, fascinating stuff. Thank you for coming to talk to us. My pleasure. Thank you. That's John Lindsay from Major Lindsay in Africa. If you'd like to see more of the stuff we're working on, be sure to go check us out online. You can find us at mimesiswebtv.com. You can also find us on YouTube and Twitter under the same handle. I'm Lee Pacquiao. Thanks for watching.